Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Warzone In Depth. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about the Bison viability. And if I'm even making an episode on this, the odds are that it's viable. And I think it kind of is. It's underrated. I initially overlooked this weapon due to its low time to kill. And it had some poor ground loot variants in Warzone when the game first came out. So I wasn't really happy with the Bison. But a fan of mine on Mixer just hounded me into trying it. Like, every day, try the Bison, try the Bison, try... I don't even think this guy liked the Bison, he just wanted to see me try to make it work. And when I did, I was pleasantly surprised at how good the Bison actually was. To be fair, the Bison is still on the slower end of time to kill for most SMGs and about half of the rifles. It has a time to kill that's pretty similar to the Growl up close. And the only other SMGs that kill slower are the Uzi and the Striker, if I'm not mistaken. So it's not a super swift killing gun, but it isn't at the bottom of the pack. And, and, and it's also not a melt machine like the MP5 or AUG. And one of the things that I like to go for on in-depth, and a lot of players tend to gravitate toward, is the very, very melty weapons. But the Bison has a lot to offer that isn't just melting faces. It has super low recoil. It has great iron sights, both on the base variant and the one that I'm using here today. It's got a huge magazine even without extending it 64 84 is insane and it has very efficient headshots which is going to be the first numerical analysis we do today on in depth but before we go any further i'd like to tell you that today's video is sponsored by raid shadow legends are you tired of cartoony mobile games and jrpgs well this brings you some old school dark fantasy rpg right to your phone it's got a strong emphasis on building and collecting characters leveling them up and making strong combinations with your faction and raid has 16 different factions including orcs dwarves high elves and my personal favorite the knight revenants who are sort of evil knights that worship a death god and they're sort of the villains of the game but i enjoy playing them because they have fantastic synergy with each other and extremely high damage for example my number one carry whisper here isn't that great by herself but in combination with skull crown She's extremely strong because Skull Crown can apply a debuff, which will make Whisper deal significantly more damage and allow me to one hit most of the bosses in the game. Raid Shadow Legends has a lot to do. You've got PvP and PvE, and you've got community tournaments. Right now, you can do tournaments for leveling your champions, beating certain bosses, writing PvP. What are you waiting for? Sign up today. Click the link down there below in the description, and that unique link will give you 100,000 silver, a free energy refill, a free XP boost, and a free champion if you're a new player. This is the champion they're giving away this month, which is the Adjudicator. She is a high elf long range champion, and she deals pretty significant damage. You'll find the rewards in your inbox for the next 30 days only. It's a limited time offer, so click that link, install raid, and you can join my guild if you want to. The base damage up close of the Bison is 34 damage per shot, but headshots will deal 55 damage per shot, which is a pretty significant increase, and very few submachine guns in Call of Duty have this. The Uzi has this, and I want to say the base AUG, like the regular 9mm AUG, will give you headshots similar like this, but even the very popular MP5 will only deal 49 damage, and the MP7 isn't super amazing or anything, so it has very, very efficient and powerful headshots. When it comes to headshot time to kill, the Bison is the second fastest killing SMG in Warzone, and it's only barely second place. It's beaten out by the base 9mm AUG, but that's not one that I would even recommend people using because the body shots are weak. So effectively, the Bison's probably the fastest killing headshot machine in Warzone, which is a nice thing to have, but it does take a lot of skill to get used to. I do want to take a look at the recoil, specifically of uh, the base version versus the version I'm going to recommend today, and you'll see that the overall recoil pattern is a little bit high. It does kick up quite a lot, and the big cluster at the top is actually your maximum like view deflection if you just hold down the trigger on the 60 round mag. But if you take a closer look, you'll see that the version that I'm going to end up recommending, which is the Chuck Walla variant, has much tighter first shots accuracy, and they're still overall quite predictable. So you've got really, really nice accuracy with this weapon. And as you watch me play with it and use it and shoot people, and if you bother trying it yourself, you will see that the recoil is moderate, but very predictable. And putting the poly barrel on there makes it much better too. The poly barrel is a very, very worthy attachment for the Bison, and I'm gonna end up recommending it. We're gonna take a quick analysis of that. The Bison aim down sights time is 216 milliseconds. The poly barrel adds about two frames to this roughly, depending on what kind of attachments you've stacked on it. But the poly barrel also makes worthwhile improvements to your range and your recoil. 
The base bison has a maximum range of 12 meters, which already outperforms the MP5 with the monolithic suppressor or anything like that. That's a fantastic base range for submachine guns, not gonna lie. When you put the poly barrel and the monolithic suppressor on there, it goes up to 17 meters, which is nice. It doesn't look like much because we're kind of dealing with low numbers here and like, yeah, five meters isn't that much, but mathematically speaking, that's about a 41% gain, which will definitely make a difference in your gunfights. So I've talked a lot about variants today in the one I'm using and blah, blah, blah. What we're taking a look at and the, the one that I went with my base is actually the Chuck Wall variant this is what you get for i want to say tier 59 of the season 3 battle pass it includes a monolithic suppressor an extended magazine attack laser a monocle sight and some other attachment that i'm actually oh the poly barrel the poly barrel is built into it so the chuck walla variant is pretty much already a perfectly optimal build and I love that it includes a TAC laser. I, I initially wasn't very fond of using the TAC laser in Warzone because it gives my position away, but with the ground meta and the way things are going, TAC lasers are getting more common, and I'm getting a little bit more used to playing around having a laser, so I'm more comfortable recommending them to you guys as well. So it's awesome that it has that. The only thing about this variant that I think is a little weird is the iron sights are fantastic. I think the iron sights are good on the regular gun, but on the Chuck Walla variant, they're even better and cleaner looking, yet this variant has a monocle sight put on it, so I always pop off the monocle sight and use that fourth attachment slot for something else to improve the gun. Personally, I went with the close quarters combat stock, which only has a minimal improvement to aim down sights time, but it doesn't have any other real downsides either. So no stock is great if you don't mind the additional recoil or if you don't mind your sights being zoomed out a little bit so they're a little bit harder to see. I don't like either of those things. The stippled grip is great. It'll actually speed up your ADS similarly to the stock and it'll speed up your sprint out, which is nice, but it adds aiming instability, which I would describe as a wobble to your guns and makes them a little bit less accurate. So I kind of tried to avoid that one. And since I mined both of these things, I tried to keep them off my weapon and go for the slightly less efficient close quarters combat stock because it maintains the amazing stability, predictability, and accuracy of the bison that I like so much. At the end of the day, the bison is a fantastically consistent weapon with a huge magazine for spraying down squads. And that's something that I haven't talked about a lot yet. It's kind of like a low numbers in depth today because of the simplicity of this weapon. But the base bison has 64 bullets in the magazine, which is awesome. That's a lot of people that you can kill before you even have to reload. Not all submachine guns and very few weapons in general can boast such a thing in Call of Duty. If you put the extended mags on there, it goes up to 84 rounds in the magazine, which is larger than a lot of the LMGs base anyway in this game, which is just a colossal amount of bullets. It's not the most efficient or optimal improvement, and you could definitely take the you know extended mags off and the weapon would work fine. I personally have just kind of had fun with them on because it's kind of like having a free reload. I'm very used to using MP5s with extended mags or just MP7s in general that have about 40 bullets in the mag. So having almost double that makes me feel like I, you know, do one gunfight and then after I, my brain says, okay, you've spent enough bullets, you back off for just a second. That would usually be the time that I stop and reload and reevaluate and the other guy plates up and we kind of get ready to do it again. But with this version of the weapon with 84 rounds, I can just take a moment to breathe and then go straight back in and catch the other guy with his pants down while he's reloading. Or when another squad comes in to scavenge, you don't even have to reload. You can just turn and spray on them. And that magazine is, is just a very big advantage for you. I think the accuracy of this weapon also allows you to make use of the headshot bonus and to use it at longer ranges. If, say, for instance, the MP5 had the same headshot bonus, it would be good and it would be very, very incredible. It was at one point incredibly melty up close, but it doesn't really have the accuracy or precision for you to make use of that outside of just getting in somebody's face. However, in my gameplay time with the Bison, I've noticed that I can control the recoil enough to where I am comfortable just going for headshots at most any range. Oddly, I tend to, I still like instinctively go for those old school Call of Duty like leg shots up close, but at long ranges, I can go for headshots and hit them quite accurate, accurately. And even at longer ranges than sometimes more high recoil rifles like the Ram might allow. So I was very, very happy with that. However, I, 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 there's one caveat that I just have to accept, and that's that similar to multiplayer and competitive CDL rule set, the MP5 is still going to be the better overall weapon for this role. The MP5 is the better submachine gun for 
just generally being an SMG because it has such a massive time to kill advantage. But that's only in very competitive matches. For most matches that most players, most of you will experience, the Bison offers a lot more than the MP5. It's got lower recoil, it's got better headshots, it's got better range, it's got better iron sights, it's got a lot of really nice stuff with it that you can definitely take advantage of in more normal, casual matches. If you're playing at a very high level of skill in the upper ends of skill-based matchmaking, if you're doing CDL, if you're really going for like a kill record in Warzone and you're playing all the set sweaty squads and stuff, the Bison will still work, it'll still be okay, but it probably won't be better than the MP5. But for like 95% of you and 95% of your matches, I think the Bison actually offers a lot more than the MP5 and is definitely worth using and worth checking out. I mean, you should at least try it. Just hear me out today and at least try it in your matches. I did want to point out that we don't actually have the statistical comparison of the base Bison versus the the Chuck Walla variant that I'm going to end up recommending today. And the reason for that is that all of the stats are pretty much identical except for the range. It has pretty much the same ADS and sprint out time. And by the time you're done adding and removing attachments, you just add a bunch of range and ammo, but you keep all of your handling stats the same, which is to say they're fairly snappy. So it's not really necessary to show the same numbers twice on the screen. Just know that they're really aren't any downsides for running the Chuck Walla variant. I think it's like one frame slower ADS overall, but that's not particularly significant. And my recommendation for the Bison is that since it's not a melt machine, you really shouldn't try to challenge people like point blank with it if you can avoid it. Try to stay on the slightly longer end of close range and go for headshots too. If you if you push the enemies just a little bit further back where their MP5s and MP7s are gonna be doing less damage than yours, and you're going for those accurate headshots, you will really spank these people. You could spank them up close if you have good accuracy and if you're, you know, get the jump on them and stuff, but really their guns do have an advantage over you there, so probably don't go for that. Guys, that is all for this episode of In-Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.